All right, everybody, I'm back. This is the big one. Now, I've put quite a bit of time into an outline. I've read through it. It's been a little bit since I've read through it. I just added the last parts that I wanted to add, and I'm going to go through it, but I'm not going to be demoing anything. I'm just going to be talking about it. All right, so I'm going to start by just going into this outline. I may deviate from it every once in a while here. This is how to make money playing gigs, and this is my, what yeah, what I would call a master class about it. It's I'm trying to encompass everything and give you as clear a strategy, like a real way to do this, and I'm just basically telling you exactly what I have done, and there are things that I did in the past that you could put implement like one of the things is I would just walk into bars and restaurants with a guitar and just say to the bartender is the manager here and if you know I'm here to play a song for you guys if you like it maybe you can book me for a gig and if the you know bartender would say hey manager's not here I'd say well I'll, how about I play one for you and if you like it you can tell the manager and most of the time, I was always scared when I would do this. I was re really nervous about it. But almost every single time, I ended up getting a really positive uh, response. And um, just positive, even not even from the standpoint that they liked my performance, just positive in that they were more receptive to it than I would have ever thought. That's something that I didn't put in my outline, and so I figured I'd, I'd mention it. There are plenty of things that are not going to be in the outline that you could do. But I'm starting, I'm telling you to, how to go from, from total scratch, never picked up an instrument, like if you just from a distance decide you want to be a musician, you want to make money playing music locally. That's what this video is about. Now, this video is for not just that person that's never played. There's something in here for everybody. Um, maybe just not like, I, I don't know, maybe Britney Spears won't care to watch this video or you know, cold play. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they will. Maybe they, there's things that they would, I don't know how much they would benefit from the video, but uh, th that's, they're on another level, uh, but they might still enjoy it. So let's just jump into where, starting with this outline. So, okay, everybody, I'm giving you guys the grail with this one. This video is going to cover a lot of ground and will be useful for people at a variety of stages of development and becoming a well-paid gigging musician. There was a time that I thought what I'm experiencing now wasn't possible for me. Last year, I had about 55000 in revenue from playing gigs. If that sounds like a lot to you, then this video is for you. If that doesn't sound like a lot to you, this video is still for you because I'm nowhere near the ceiling. If we're being honest, the music industry has a pretty high income ceiling. I'm mean, thinking of some of the names I just mentioned um, it could be argued that the ceiling is what you make it. So really, you know, we're, what I'm trying to talk about is making money playing gigging locally, but the career of musician has an extremely high income ceiling, and you're not, in doing music, you're not limited to your local scene. The music industry is huge. However, what I'm focusing on with this video is making money gigging locally, not being a superstar. Gigging locally is something anybody can do. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to get yourself gig ready, which is a prerequisite for getting paid to do it, and how to get leads and land gigs and how to satisfy your clients and grow your business by getting positive reviews, repeat business and referrals. I'm going to tell you exactly what I do today, where the last 10 years of effort have led me and what it's taught me and what I do today to be as effective as possible. So let's start with getting yourself gig ready. You need to be able to make music competently. Wrapped up in this is getting some stage performance experience and purchasing the necessary equipment. So step one is learn how to make music. This is the first step, of course, and may take some time, but in my opinion, it is far easier than most people think, and I truly believe anyone can do it. The quickest way to make money playing gigs locally is to learn how to play songs that people recognize. Disclaimer, I do want to say here that what I am giving you here is one strategy for making money playing music, but not the only one by any stretch. 
In fact, you, if, you, if you already know that what you want to be is a classical pianist playing the great halls around the world, then it's probably best for you to put every waking hour into your classical piano. But at the same time that I say that, I'm reminded that my cover gigging experience overlapped wonderfully into a classical piano gig that I had and helped me tremendously with on-the-spot dynamics and connection to my audience. But your long-term goals will be very helpful in deterring, determining what you should do with your time now. If you want to have a full schedule gigging locally, this video is for you. So back to it. Learn in songs that people recognize. In my opinion, the easiest way to do this is with guitar. I highly recommend the guitar for, for this for the following reasons. It's not that hard to learn how to strum a guitar. The biggest leap that you should learn that you should absolutely learn is doing bar chords in the in the guitar and learning guitar. It can be a frustrating part in the learning process because it seems impossible at first, but you must just keep trying until you get it, and you will. Once you've taught yourself the basic minor and major chords and bar chords, you can play any song. This is not a joke. With basic minor and major and bar chords, you can create satisfactory arrangements of any song you've ever heard. There are lots of little chord variations that you can create by pulling one finger on or off the fretboard to make your supportive guitar part more full and, and interesting for listeners. Easy and small adjustments that make a world of difference for the listener that give you creative options and that take very little time to master. Guitar number two, guitar covers the frequency scale. Guitar can do a good job with low end and high end frequencies. This is very useful for connecting with people, inspiring them, and getting them to dance. You can give their ears a pretty full sonic experience in strumming a guitar. Another fine instrument to support yourself with is a ukulele, but it is more limited to the high frequencies. Anything you can do to create variety makes a difference. That That is something, I'm not sure how many times I mentioned that this in, in this outline, but variety is just huge. And the beautiful thing about variety is it's something you can plan for. So anywhere you can find variety, if it's in the frequency range, if it's in different tones that you use, maybe you add a harmonic to what you're doing. You know, maybe you sing in falsetto on a song. Anything with variety just mixes it up, and especially for three to four hour gigs, makes the experience more interesting, less mundane, and just overall better. So that it's a very simple way to enhance what you're doing, uh, where you can plan this in advance and it doesn't necessarily take on the spot skill or something that's going to be difficult to do. Uh, just once you have made that plan, what you're doing is just better. So anything you can do to create variety makes a difference. Strategic planning is an easy way to compete with talent. In fact, it's probably a lot more important. Number three, guitar is easy to transport and set up. Another fine direction you could go is a keyboard. But to get good tones and set up for gigs, it can be a major hassle and expensive. It's far easier to get a mid-range guitar and put some pedals in a suitcase. Lastly on this, as you become familiar with chords and song structures, you can always change instruments. The guitar can always be a starting point. Instruments are all different, but fundamentally the same. Instruments give you the ability to make and control sounds. Different instruments make different sounds, and you may find that certain sounds appeal to you more than others. But also, every instrument has its own tonal range, and advantages and disadvantages with how they are used in playing notes and chords. I'm giving you some some thought in in how to pick an instrument. Like I said, I would suggest the guitar, but I've seen very successful performers, as I'm sure you have, that play a whole wide range of different instruments. I think most important you want to pick one that you are excited about. But if you don't have one in particular that you are excited about, guitar is not a bad option. And then second to that, I would say piano. Do get a keyboard. Now you need to teach yourself to sing. My guess is you've already been singing in the shower and in the car. Just expand on that. 
In fact, I would argue that speech is song. But I'll save that for another day. Start by learning songs you like to sing. Similar to learning bar chords, but not as hard, it will take some persistence to be able to sing and strum a guitar at the same time, but you will get it. Many folks are intimidated by singing, but it's not nearly as hard as people think. The most important thing a person can do is sing from the heart. You can be an absolute beginner and sound terrible and still sing from the heart. If you care about what you are doing, that will always come through and your audience will appreciate it. Like all things, the more you practice singing, the better you will get. There's no other way to, ex- to get experience other than just doing it. But if there is one thing to start with in your mind, number one, mic technique is huge. Singing is one thing. Singing into a mic is another. You can be the best singer in the world, and if you have zero mic technique, you will sound bad. The reverse is true to an extent also. Proper use of a mic can help a mediocre singer to be even more effective than they would otherwise. To gain more presence, you can lean in closer. If you're struggling on a note and you know it, back off a little to lessen the consequence. You should feel an intimate connection with your microphone at all times. A touch of reverb or echo can soften a harsh voice, but don't make the mistake of falling in love with these effects. Don't hide in reverb or echo. Neither is needed, I promise you. These effects can help balance your voice in a space, but if you aren't sure whether or not it's an improvement, err in the direction of less or none. Equipment that you'll need. Microphones, a PA system, a mixer, guitar, pedals, keyboard, cables, stands. For, for mics, we've got the Shure SM58 or the Sennheiser E935. Both of these are great. I had my doubts about the SM58 when I started. With experienced ears now, experienced ears now, I happily use now an SM58. That's the main microphone that I use. I used to use the Sennheiser E835 and Sennheiser E935 for a long time, uh, but but as of now, I'm I'm really really happy with the uh, SM58. PA system. I am using a Bose F1 tower and a QSC K12 as a floor monitor at most of my gigs. I have two F1 towers and two QSC K12s available to me, but most of the time I use just one of each. In smaller spaces, I will sometimes just use a K12. If you're just getting started, there are a lot of different speakers on the market that do a suitable job. My first one was a Fender Passport, like a a Fender Passport 250, and that got me through plenty of gigs, but I would say it's worth it. Your speakers are some of the more important equipment you can get. If you could get your hands on a pair of QSC K12s, that will take you very, very far. Mixer. For solo acoustic, I do all my mixing through a TC Perform VG. The Perform VG is awesome. I've made a separate video and article on it. You can add reverb and echo to your voice. You can mix your vocal and instrument levels. You can add reverb, echo, and another effect that I'm I'm forgetting right now to your guitar, even through it. You can add vocal harmonies with a foot switch. Get to know the TC Perform VG. In my opinion, there is no cheaper and more effective way to gig. I am so sold on this on this tool i'm so happy to have it it's one of my favorite pieces of equipment and it's relatively cheap you know it, it it's greatly reducing your costs and it gives you so much of what you need for uh to be effective at a solo acoustic gig and i even use it in my my full band gigs because it's nice to have the ability to throw harmonies and different effects on the voice too guitar In getting a guitar, Yamaha makes some good guitars for the money, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm currently doing. I think it's very useful, interesting, and fun, but it's certainly not necessary. I'm using a Gibson J45 that was gifted to me, but my first guitar that I still use today was a Yamaha. Get a nice-sounding Yamaha, or maybe an Orangewood, or a Breedlove, or a Taylor, with an acoustic pickup in it. 
get a PowerTap Earth pickup and have it installed as well. Don't replace the pickup you already have. Add the PowerTap Earth as a second pickup with a second output jack. This is useful in multiple ways, and I'll explain further in the next section on pedals. You are creating a hybrid guitar. One great advantage that is not to be overlooked is that you are very unlikely to have the batteries in both pickups die on the same day. It's an unfortunate position to be in to realize that you forgot to charge the bat or change the battery in time and you are at the gig with an unusable guitar and no spare battery. Two pickups is a safeguard against that. Pedals, Line 6 Podgo or Helix, Boss LS2 Line Selector, Boss RC1, Switch 3 or Switch 6 for the Perform Fiji, a boost pedal to boost your signal, and a Boss OC5. Let's start with the LS2 Line Selector. Now, some of this is not entirely necessary. Really, what, another pedal that I used for a stretch of time was a, a T-Rex Acoustic Soulmate. There are a number of different pedals on the market that you can get that will do a suitable job. You want something that allows a little bit of reverb, a little bit of echo, a boost, the, the boost capability, and a looper. I would say a looper is very, very helpful for solo acoustic gigs, something that can do looping. Now, as I mentioned, the Perform VG, the TC Perform VG, that has the ability to run your guitar through it and give echo and reverb to your guitar. So truly, that Perform VG is all you absolutely need to be able to do an acoustic gig. It really has everything. The only thing it doesn't have is a looper. So I'm going into a little more depth about what I'm currently doing, and you can use that or not use it, um, but it will give you some insight into what is possible. So let's start with the LS2 line selector. This pedal will allow for multiple pedal chains that can be toggled through. So you will run the power tap earth into the LS2 line selector. The signal chain A will be the OC5, and signal chain B will be the pod go. The signal out of LS2 will run into your boost pedal and then into the Boss RC1. You will also run into your other acoustic pickup from, directly from your guitar into the bar, Boss RC1 because it has two inputs. Using the volume control on your acoustic pickup and volume knobs on your pedal board, you can now blend an acoustic sound with bass from the OC5 Octaver or you can or any other sounds layered onto the power tap earth with the pod go. You can base you can do basic looping with the RC1 and you can quickly boost the signal for lead guitar after recording a loop. The wah function on the pod go can be engaged to get an immediate tonal shift and small boost for leads as well. This is the setup that I have and I know that's probably a lot and uh, is probably way too much for a lot of people. But the point being if you go the, the, the route of having two pickups on your guitar that I talked about earlier, you're able to create blends of these tones. And so you can have one that's more of a, a real acoustic sound. And then the Power Tap Earth pickup that I talked about that I'm very happy with gives you a little more of an electric guitar feel. And since it's so feedback resistant you can actually run it through electric guitar type signal chains. You can actually use electric guitar effects like distortion and overdrive and these kinds of effects and not have the feedback problems that you would typically get on an acoustic pickup. And then when you blend these together, you get some really cool tones. And so the other advantage of this is that you can get an acoustic sound when you want it for a particular song and you can get lots of other different tones uh, so if you want to play a reggae song you can get something with more more delay and more reverb or I play a, I cover a song that needs a whole lot of reverb and and delay because it need, you need to feel like you're in a cave and you can basically get whatever you want so it goes back to that word variety this helps you create variety um, which is just a a non-skill-based way to drastically 
improve your offering, you know, your professional offering for what you're doing, your service. All right, let's move on to cables and stands. You you need XLR cables and quarter-inch cables. The Samson BL3VP boom stand and cable pack on Amazon is a suitable quality and budget-friendly way to get started. You also need at least two 50-foot extension cables to keep in your car and some power strips. I have four power strips that I carry with me, with one of them having a 20-foot long cable. I also have another 10-foot extension cable. These come in handy and can make life easier. Every setup situation is different, and it's good to be prepared enough to be versatile as need be. Clark Technic Pro Splitter. This is an XLR splitter that you can run one XLR cable in and five separate ones out that all have the same signal. This works great with my Perform VG and really in a lot of different settings. Anytime I need to split an XLR signal, it's really, really handy to have to just drop there kind of at the front of everything and and spread signals out to a stage monitor or to my mains um, and then control my volume for those speakers on the speaker itself. Cable bag, you need a good cable bag. They, they really make a world of difference, something with, where you can drop cables into, into slot. And a Roadrunner RR5TEB Highway Premium Electric Base Gig Bag Black. This is a strange looking bag in a way, but it is an awesome bag and it allows you, it's, it's gonna hold up for a long time. I've still got mine. It allows you to carry your guitar and then has a huge uh, pouch that's the same size as the case where you can carry so much other stuff. So you can carry your microphone, you can carry whatever cables you need for your gig. So especially if you're solo acoustic gigging, this bag can help make it a one-trip experience to go set up, let's say with a QSC K12, you can make one trip from your car to where you need to set up and have everything you need. This is really nice. It might not sound like a big deal, but I promise you, as if you do this for a long time, the miles add up and... The sooner that you get started on minimizing your load, the better. Every gig that you do, you want to be as efficient as possible. Because if you're doing this full time, you're going to be doing a lot of gigs. And any if you can save 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes on the front end and the back end, that can quickly become 30 minutes, you know, or 10, 10 20 or 30 minutes. And that's 10, 20, or 30 minutes for every single gig. So if you did five gigs in a week, you just saved yourself two hours or maybe maybe more. And if you're doing more gigs than that, you, you can see what I'm saying. So it's also the load because when you're doing a lot of gigs and you're picking up, speakers are heavy. If you're picking up heavy speakers and you're moving around, any reduction in, in the load of these repeated tasks it's uh, it's making the gigs more worth it, and it makes you able to do more gigs because you have more time and you have more energy. And so you just want to make maximize and make the most of everything you're doing. And so you're you know from the cable bag that you use um, to the, the the gig bag that you use to carry your guitar, making some good decisions on this stuff can really help your longevity and. Uh, your your efficiency and ability to make money. Uh, all right, so let's go to keyboard. If you're going the keyboard route, I would recommend the Casio CDP S100 and get Keyscape. So you'll need a laptop as well, or a computer of, or some some kind of device that can send those sounds from Keyscape to your Casio CDP S100. But this is a much cheaper route than getting one of these really expensive. Keyboards, you know, that are multiple thousands of dollars, and uh, and and in my opinion, you can get a, a very, very, very good sound this way. So, Casio CDP S100 with Keyscape set list. So, how to pick songs? As you do this for a long time, you'll learn more and more about what songs work for you. But I'll throw some out here right now that work really, really well for me. We've got La Bamba. Footloose. Okay, I won't do that for melody, but Hot Hot Hot. Paper Planes. Brown Eyed Girl. The Way You Look Tonight. P 
Pure Imagination, Rainbow Connection, Under the Sea, Best Part. Now, some of these songs you might be familiar with, some of them you might not. If you're familiar with all of them, you can see there's a lot of variety in that song selection. I've got some Disney songs. I've got a Frank Sinatra song. I've got a Van Morrison song. I've got songs that are not, you know, that are a sort of a pop song from maybe 10 years ago. I've got uh, a Spanish song that just has that, that riff based, uh, you know, dun, 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 La Bamba that just everybody knows. That's such a danceable song. Hot, hot, hot. Buster Poindexter. If you think you have a genre, I promise you, you can learn like every genre. And if you learn them and you try to try to do them, you'll find that they you make them your own. And you end up sounding like yourself and you do your own version of it, but people will still be able to recognize the song. And so songs like Hot, Hot, Hot or La Bamba, these are great songs for getting people to dance. There's things like Ole, 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 that people can't help but want to sing along with. It's so easy to get people to sing along to that stuff. And any time you get people engaged is a good thing. If you've got an easy way to get people singing along with you, you've already, you, you, that, what that essentially means is you've got an easy way to get past that barrier that can be there between the performer and the audience. If you have easy ways to do that, use them. There's no reason not to use them. This this makes you this makes what you're doing more fun. It just people are going to review what you're doing better, but also it opens the door to other things you're doing because it, that that can be the doorway to getting people sort of to to vibe with you and 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 support you and want to engage with you and then they're more likely to be engaged by some of the other stuff that you might like doing better there's no reason not to use some of that stuff uh, there there are tool great tools that are at your disposal that are already made and why not put them to use so set list is is so important song selection is so important uh, and so you know, as you do this longer and longer, you'll have a, a, a wider variety and more and more songs to pull from. I'll always be looking for songs that are very relatable and also songs that you just like to sing because if you're having fun, that's a big part of it. If you're having fun, it's a lot easier for other people to want to have fun too. All right, gig types. We've got bar and restaurant, farmer's market, rehearsal dinner, birthday party, community event, apartment life. City Parks and Rec, Engagement Celebration, Anniversary Celebration, Graduation Party, Fundraiser, Corporate Event. All of these events can be played almost exactly the same way. These are background music gigs. The music is there to create atmosphere and people want to feel good. All kinds of music can work from romantic to playful to silly to dramatic to dance-oriented, slow tempos, fast tempos, it all works. It just needs to be rooted in positive emotion. Some consideration for the social vibe of the moment is worthwhile, but fundamentally I recommend playing what you feel like playing. If you are having fun playing, chances are your audience will be having fun listening. It may seem selfish, but focus on yourself first because your energy is about to be amplified into every single person's ears. You may be background music, and you may you maybe think that you're being ignored, but you are the life of the party, and one of its most powerful forces. So be sharp, but relax and enjoy yourself. <laughs> In some way, you're not playing songs. You're playing the audience. The songs are just tools in your toolkit that have versatility, as well as unique purposes. Watch for tapping feet. Consider the type of event and what that might suggest about how much or how little people may want to dance. The reason I say watch for tapping feet is if you're ever getting discouraged because you feel like people aren't listening, all you have to see to know that's not true is if you see somebody tapping their foot or tapping their finger or maybe kind of like looking off and singing some songs. Like a lot of times when I'm singing Hey now, you're an all-star, get your game on. I'll, I'll, I'll look around and, and it's, you can usually see somebody that knows the words and is singing along and you positively impacted it. That's all you need to know. You know, you, Maybe you're not doing the best rendition that 
the most artistically inspiring rendition that was ever done, but you helped awaken a memory and, and something that a, a shared experience and positively impact the event. You can see it in that there in that and that means you positively you made a positive impact. That's what you're getting paid to do. So you you've done your job. That's something to feel good about and and understand that you're you are succeeding at what you're doing. Just look for those signs. All right. So where are we here? Um, in some way, you're not playing songs for the audience. Watch for tight feet. Consider the most. Consider the type of event and what that might suggest about how much or how little people may want to dance. Regardless of anything, if you get the hosts of the party dancing, then you have won the game. Dancing is the best evidence of successful music at these types of events. It's not always easy to get there. Every group is different. Every day, a new challenge. If you get get them dancing, that's that's what I'm striving for usually, is at some point I probably want to get, I want to try to get people dancing. Not every single time, not every single event, but if I think that the event can, if, if it can happen at the event and it, and it can it can work there, then I will try to, I'll try to make that happen. Wedding ceremony, and that has so much to do with your energy level and, and your effort and, and how you're trying to raise the energy. And I, I like to try to do it gradually, you know, just steady, steadily try to bring the energy up. If you try to do it all at once, maybe it works, but uh, I mean, play around with it and see what works for you. Wedding ceremony, reception, funeral, original music venues, proposals. These just mentioned are fundamentally different events. The wedding reception is the most similar to the others. The most likely difference is that there may be some emceeing involved. You may have to introduce the bride and groom and make announcements and so forth. More speaking involved. And it is more, you're less background music at an event like that. It's way more engaging and, and more expectation of engaging. The wedding ceremony is typically instrumental music and is a very structured event that requires planning and practice. Do your research if you get booked for one of these. These are wonderful events to play for. Celebrate your audience and celebrate the occasion and play from your heart with joy. Funeral. I have less experience with these. It is mourning, but still a celebration of life and gratitude. Love your audience and play from your heart. Original music venues are fundamentally different than anything else. It is personal. Engage your audience and speak to them and play original music. Original music at original music venues doesn't have to stay in positive emotion. Give the people an experience and care about your audience and play from your heart. The proposal can be a lot of fun. Often one song and usually no more than two or three. It can be done without any PA equipment, just a guitar and a voice. Be in the right place at the right time and wait for the special moment to serenade two lovers. As you can see, there are a ton of different kinds of events. Lots of all these different kinds of events are happening all the time. There are plenty of opportunities to gig. Scheduling and money. Work can be found every day of the week. In a reasonable sized city, live musicians are being hired every day. Mondays and Tuesdays are generally the least lucrative, but if you want, you can probably find a couple of bars or restaurants that will put you up for a, a for weeklies for 150 per 3 hours. Mondays and Tuesdays for 250 do exist, but they are harder to come by. Private events do happen on Mondays and Tuesdays, but with less frequency. Particularly corporate events are where you can get to 400 to 600 on a Monday or Tuesday. Apartment complexes and communities sometimes host events on Mondays or Tuesdays, even in the afternoons that might get you 300 for a couple hours. Wednesdays are interesting. In some ways, they can be better than Thursdays. Every kind of live music work happens on Wednesdays. Still, overall, a lower-paying day, but it's there if you look for it. Thursdays, book rehearsal dinners. Rehearsal dinners can get you 500 plus and are generally much nicer to work than the bars and restaurants. And Thursdays are a common night for these. <clears throat> if not a rehearsal dinner, there are plenty of bars and restaurants booking live music on Thursday. Lots of corporate events can be found on Thursdays as well. Friday is another great night for rehearsal dinners. Fridays are filled with opportunities for live musicians. Birthday parties, corporate events, anniversary parties, etc. Lots of people like to hold their private events on Fridays. Try to get a private event on Friday. These can regularly be five to $800 nights. Saturday can be very lucrative. 
Everybody is off on Saturday. Everything under the sun happens on Saturday. If you want, you can work three gigs on Saturday. Early morning farmer's market may pay you one to $300 for two to four hours. It's possible to land two private events on Saturday as well, an afternoon graduation party from 2 to 4 p.m. and a birthday party from 6 to 9 p.m. If you want, you could still do a late night bar, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. My suggestion is don't do that to yourself because it will wear you out. But theoretically, that's 300 plus 450 plus 550 plus 200, which equals a $1,500 day. Sundays have lots of relaxed Sunday brunch opportunities to make 150 to 250 and lots of private events. Sunday can consistently be a seven to $800 day. So if you want to stay busy, this is a feasible income. Monday, $200. Tuesday, $200. Wednesday, $300. Thursday, $500. Friday, $550. Saturday, $900. And Sunday, $700. That's $3,350 for the week. Now, successfully landing a schedule like that is no easy task, and neither is working it. In fact, it's almost impossible, but it is possible. Let's talk attire. As a general rule, I wear what I believe I will feel comfortable in and what I think will connect with the audience in a way that makes my job of winning them over easier. If it's a a pool party, maybe a nice short sleeve button down with slacks and flip flops. I've dressed as suave Frankenstein for a Halloween party. Some rehearsal dinners need suits. Most are button down slacks and dress shoes. Farmer's Market, you might find me in a t-shirt and casual long pants and flip-flops. Your attire is very important as it is the first way your audience connects with you. Before you ever play a note, they evaluate how you look. Even while you are playing, your appearance will be actively affecting how your audience is receiving you. But I recommend never dressing in a way that you genuinely don't feel comfortable with. Make sure that your clothing represents who you are. If it doesn't, your clothing style and your music style will have clashing messages, and that will sow distrust and make it harder for audiences to open up to you. Leads. Build a website. It honestly doesn't need to be anything complex. In fact, it's probably better if it's not complex. If you purchase a domain from GoDaddy.com, it comes with a free one-page site. That's really enough. You don't need a professional email. John Doe Music at gmail.com is good enough. If your website can feature a video of you introducing yourself, playing some music with adequate quality video and audio recording, that is all you really need to convert leads. Build accounts on Gig Salad, The Bash, and Thumbtack, and The Knot slash Wedding Wire. Here's the rundown on these. These online lead generation sites really work, and they're all different and are more or less lucrative depending on your Uh, location. You can call them and ask for the numbers in your area and they'll probably give them to you. Gig Salad is my favorite for these reasons. You can create a functioning account for free. You will only pay a percentage of revenue for successfully booked gigs. Gig Salad collects the payment up front. This is great because there is no doubt you'll be paid if you do the work. If your quote includes a deposit, you will receive the deposit within a few days of the event being booked. And perhaps most importantly, you can ask past clients and or friends to write you some great reviews to get you started. There is no reason not to do this. Ask some of the, the bars that you've played for or you know, the managers or owners or your friend's birthday that you sang a song at and get some good reviews up there. In my opinion, Gig Salad is the easiest one to start converting on and is the most client-side friendly platform there is. The Bash takes second place. If you want a functional account, you must pay an annual fee. There are three tiers. I do the second tier because I am willing to travel regionally for gigs and that makes it worth it for me. This is like 300 to 500 per year, something like that. Despite paying an annual fee, you still have to pay a minimum of a $20 booking fee for any gig that you successfully book on the Bash. Therefore, overall, the Bash takes a bigger cut but they still do provide an effective platform that generates quality leads. Take the time to make a good profile with good pictures and videos and audio. Simple and to the point is always best in my opinion. 
Unfortunately, unverified reviews are not allowed, so it's tough at the beginning. But if you make a good profile and good pitches to the leads that you receive, you will get a booking. Once you get one verified booking and verified review, it makes everything a lot easier. It makes it easier for others to follow and for you to get more bookings. Thumbtack does have some quality leads, but you have to pay if a potential client simply responds to your message or quote. There have been a number of times I ended up paying a substantial fee of $20 to $30 for someone's vague response with no follow-up. Something like, sounds good, let me think about it, and then never hear back from them, and that costs $20 to $30. Overall, I found it to not be worth my time, but it can work, and I have landed some quality gigs through Thumbtack. I just think the platform could be better thought out and may just not be a good fit for musicians. It's gone through some changes, and it was better before the changes were made, but if you carefully review leads and the information included in them, you can target potential clients who are most likely to book you and make the most out of your gambles. Wedding Wire and The Knot are one and the same as far as I'm aware. It is quite expensive to get started with them. It is real and I know musicians who are successful on this platform. For my money, I have chosen not to get involved. I like what I'm accomplishing via my website, my reputation, the bash, and gig salad. I've read many accounts of people looking into a year-long contract with Wedding Wire and losing a lot of money. Accounts can be $800 plus per month. Now, this may seem like a lot, but if you are committed to succeeding on the platform, it only takes a few opportunities landed per month to make it worth it. There are real leads on this platform. Unfortunately, there is no risk-free way to try it out. You have to bite the bait with the one-year contract hook and hope you're market ready. They will offer you lower rates if you ask, but I get the distinct impression they are more concerned with client acquisition than client experience. None of these companies will take responsibility for your failure to land gigs, which is understandable, and so it's a very steep entry price to pay with no guarantee. Quoting, With quoting, I take into account hours worked. Songs need to be learned, travel distance, number of setup locations, and any other special needs. I generally quote anywhere from three to 900 for one gig. Your market is likely different. One great tip I can offer is to be succinct with your bids. Let your content speak for itself, your profile, your website, your video, your song, your demo reel. Whatever you are primarily using for marketing, your marketing material, let that do the talking. The message associated with your quote doesn't need to be more than three sentences. Mine often looks like, I would love to play for your insert event type or description here. I know hundreds of songs, parentheses, with a link to this the song list, and I have a great PA. Please let me know if you have any questions. And then I list, I say best, and my contact information, my name and contact information. It really, you can, you can want to try to tell people all this information that can, you might think will help make the decision. But really, it, it's better in my experience just to keep it really simple. If they're interested, they're going to check it out. Um, and uh, they're, they're on the site to look for people that they want to book. So they're probably going to go to your profile. You don't need to convince them in your message. Offer the, offer the price. If the price is within their budget, they're probably going to look, and then they'll make a decision. If you try to convince them in your in your bid, this can come off as needy or desperate and, and uh, I think has lower conversion rates. Referrals and positive reviews. Generally speaking, if you show up and do the work with a positive disposition, you will get a positive review. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Most of the time, if you ask for it, people will oblige. Especially ask for it if you know your client had a great time. Keep the contact information of all your past clients. You can put it a mailing list together. You can put it on a spreadsheet. You can text them Happy New Year. You can ask them if they have any upcoming events or know anyone who needs a musician. As long as you are not pestering them, most folks will have no problem with a couple business-related messages each year. If you get leads out of that, they're free and usually have higher conversion rates. All right, so there you have it. The only other thing I'll say, well, I guess I do want to say it goes back towards towards the beginning Towards the beginning, talked about getting performance experience. 
There's no better way to get performing experience than going out and doing open mics. I think that's one of the ways that everyone starts. Um, it's one of the best ways to start. Or you can just go to the beach or go to the park and just play. And then a lot of times people will kind of sit next to you or sit near you to listen. And, and any kind of performance experience that you do where you are, are making music and other people can hear it, this is performance. This is music performance. And anything you do like that is, is useful and has its place and, and, and serves you in, in helping to make you better. Um, there was a, one time I played outside of a hostel. Or I, was, I played at the beach and then I was walking back. Some, some of my earliest experiences I was walking back to uh, my apartment and this guy outside of a hostel is probably in his 50s or 60s says, hey, you can't walk by another guitar player and not jam. And I was terrified. And uh, he made me sing right in front of all these people coming and going from this really, really busy hostel and uh, in Miami. And and I did it, and it really just helped me. It really helped me because it, it uh, showed me you know, you can do it. And I got some positive feedback from different people, and it just it wasn't the... the uh, n- nothing bad happened. <laughs> and so open mics are one of the best ways to get performance experience. Almost anywhere you are, you can find an open mic. And get performance experience but not only that you can connect with lots of other people that are doing music in your area a lot of times the hosts are pretty experienced musicians themselves um, and you'll run into a lot of different people of different levels some very skilled players come through open mics it's a chance for you to connect to your colleagues your peers fellow hobbyists fellow uh, you know people that are, 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 are trying to do the same thing that you're doing. So don't overlook open mics. So the other thing I'd say is to always be learning and sharpening and refining what you are doing in every respect. Your marketing and messaging can always get better, and it may need to change as the world around you also changes. Your skills can always get better. Your communication skills, your skills on your instrument, your stage presence, your song selection your health and energy level, everything factors in to make you a more effective and more valuable entertainment option. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you feel I left anything out or if you'd like me to go into more detail about anything, please let me know in the comments below. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.